The M1 MacBook Air and the iPad Pro are two very different devices, but they're both extremely capable in the right setting. Let's work out which one's right for you. Hello and welcome back to Mark Ellis Reviews. Thanks for subscribing if you have, and if you haven't subscribed, the button's down there. So I'm quite a heavy user of the M1 MacBook Air and the 12.9 inch iPad Pro, the 2018 version, not the M1 version. They're both really capable of doing a fantastic job for your business, or if you just need a really good home computing device. And I think we're at the point now where I can actually compare the two. They're both lightweight and very portable. They feature roughly the same screen size. They're equally powerful, particularly if you go for the M1 version of the iPad Pro. And they both support a very similar range of apps and services, whether it be Apple's own ecosystem with things like Apple Notes and Apple Mail and that kind of stuff, right up to the likes of Microsoft Office and even Adobe. But if you could only buy one of these devices, which one would it be? Let's work it out. I thought I'd start this by quickly explaining how I use both of these devices because it's quite different. So with the M1 MacBook Air, this is like my kind of early morning writing device. First thing I do when I get up in the morning, I do start work quite early because I'm a bit strange, but when I start work at 6 a.m. normally, I will go for this first because this is what I do pretty much all of my writing on. And it's those early morning periods where I get most of my blogs written. But I also use it for obviously email, replying to YouTube comments, all the kind of normal admin stuff when I'm sat on the sofa or potentially sat in a coffee shop somewhere. I use it for Teams calls as well. It just does all the normal computer stuff that I need to get done when I'm not sat at this desk with the 24 inch iMac in front of me. This is the perfect portable replacement for that computer. Now the iPad Pro, as I say, this isn't the M1 version. This is the 2018 iPad Pro, 12.9 inch. As you can see, I've got the magic keyboard case attached to it, which I really like. It's got a few flaws. It makes it heavier and it's not made of the best material. It's not perfect, but it turns into a really useful, I hate to use the phrase, laptop replacement. Have the pencil as well. That's key because the, one of the main things I use this for now is photo editing. Now I only switched to the iPad Pro for that recently. Historically, I've always used a Mac for Lightroom photo editing. But as soon as I tried the latest version of Lightroom on iPad OS, I was completely sold. Just the combination of this brilliant screen, the pencil, it's just a great way to edit your photos. So every day, because I, I tend to take photos for this channel or for the blog every single day and to edit them, I always use this. I also use it occasionally for a bit of email. And at the moment, I've switched back to this for a bit of writing as a test. I'm looking at how this performs as a writing tool compared to the M1 MacBook Air. There'll be some content on the way about that fairly soon. But that's pretty much it. It's um, I, I use it to consume stuff occasionally, but for that, I generally use the fourth generation iPad Air, which is just a little bit of a, a better size, really. So this, for me, is a pretty expensive photo editing tool and occasional email and writing device. That's pretty much the way it occupies my life. Now, it's important to note that I do not use either of these devices for creative tasks like video editing or audio editing. All of that is done on the M1 Mac Mini, which is just beneath that great big monitor behind me. That is my video and audio editing station. It will stay like that for a while until something else replaces it. These are for everything else, basically. And later, I'm gonna tell you which one I would keep if I could only keep one. But first, let's focus on the decision you've gotta make between these two devices. I thought I'd start with creative work because if you're watching this as some form of creator, whether it be a illustrator, video editor, audio producer, or photographer, you might be looking at both of these devices and wondering which one would work better for you. And it all comes down to the software you use. So if you take me as an example, I don't use the iPad Pro for video editing simply because I use Final Cut Pro. And at the moment, you can only get Final Cut Pro on the Mac. I desperately want to see it on the iPad. It would make me buy an M1 iPad Pro tomorrow if Final Cut Pro arrived on iPad OS and it only worked on that iPad. Alas, it doesn't. There are options for video editing, obviously, on iPad Pros and iPads in general. So for example, LumaFusion. I've never used that software, but I'm told it's very good for mobile video editing on, on iPad OS. I just don't use it. And for me, switching from Final Cut Pro to something like LumaFusion is quite a big task, which I just don't have time for at the moment. I'm gonna do it at some stage and I will report back, but at the moment it's just too big a uplift. So if you're a creative user, it really depends on what type of software you use. So if you do rely on platforms like Logic Pro or Final Cut Pro, you'll need to get yourself the M1 MacBook Air. If you're a photographer, 
I really recommend this. Lightroom on the iPad is, as I mentioned earlier, superb. It's a similar story with software development. Now I'm not a software developer, so I'll let people get involved in the comments with this, with their own opinions on these two devices. If you are a really serious software developer, you'll be going for a fairly chunky, powerful Mac. So you're probably not even watching this video, but if you're a hobbyist or if it's something you're just getting into, technically you'll wanna go for the M1 MacBook Air, mainly because you can get Xcode on it. It's been around for forever and it just works and you can do all manner of programming on an M1 MacBook Air. Now with the iPad Pro, at the moment, you're left with something like Swift Playgrounds, which at the time of recording is a great way to learn basic programming, but you can't go much further than that. However, later this year, iPadOS 15 will include a much better updated version of Swift Playgrounds, which will actually let you develop a full iPad app on one of these and publish it to the App Store. I think that's the way it works. If I've got that wrong, let me know in the comments. Now, when it comes to general computer use, and by this, I mean things like web browsing, email, writing documents, using Microsoft Word, video calling, working with spreadsheets, browsing the web, all the normal computer stuff. Again, either of these devices will work. And this advice I'm about to give applies to both home users and business users. All you need to do is ask yourself one question, which is, have I used macOS before? If the answer to that is yes, and you actually quite like macOS, but you're just curious about the potential of switching to an iPad Pro full time, I'd urge caution. For me, iPadOS feels restrictive. And it's really hard to explain why that's the case. But for instance, if I know that I've got to write a blog post, publish it, add a photo to that as well. At the moment, as I mentioned earlier, I do the photo editing on this, but everything else, the publishing, the image manipulation, if I need to do anything with it, I tend to do on the M1 MacBook Air or my iMac, purely because I'm so familiar with Mac OS. And generally speaking, that kind of work involves lots of messing around with files and doing other stuff, which with iPad OS just feels a bit cumbersome. Finder, for example, on the Mac is just, I love Finder, whereas the Files app on this, it's still not there, Apple, I'm afraid. It's still a bit ham-fisted to use. And even with this great keyboard case attached and the fact that iPad OS now supports a trackpad, okay, it feels a bit more like a computer, but it's still iPad OS, which for me personally, is just a little bit of a ham-fisted approach to certain regular tasks that I would normally do on a Mac. But again, that's only because I'm so familiar with Mac OS and like it so much. So if you do like Mac OS, whether you're a business user or a home user, just get the M1 MacBook Air because it is the best laptop I've ever owned. And as I say, if macOS is something you enjoy using, this ain't going to cut it. However, if you haven't really spent much time with macOS or you haven't used it at all, so this is your first foray into Apple stuff, I'd actually really advise looking at this, particularly if you're not the creative that I mentioned earlier, if you're someone who just needs it for general computer use. iPad OS is probably, I think, a bit more of a approachable welcoming operating system compared to macOS. Don't get me wrong, macOS isn't complicated, it's not hard to learn, but there's something about iPadOS that is just, you know, you pick it up and you can use it pretty much straight away. iPadOS, let's not beat around the bush, is a bigger version of iOS. That's still the case, and no matter what you think of that, and I have certain reservations about it, it does mean it's very easy to get to grips with. It feels very familiar. And again, if we take my use case as an example, if I completely took out the video editing side of my business and the blogging side of my business, I could do everything else on this, no questions asked. So to summarize, if you're familiar with macOS already and it feels like a nice, comfortable pair of old slippers, like it does for me, I would go for the M1 MacBook Air. If you're not that familiar with macOS and you're a fairly general computer user, get the iPad Pro. So as you can see, the choice is actually, I think, quite straightforward. You just have to think about the software you use, whether you like macOS already, and just the type of user you are. But there are other factors with these two devices that might sway you. And quite often it's the simplest or on the face of it, the silliest of things that can sway you towards a particular device. And those things are never silly, actually. Um, you know, you can buy stuff just because you want it, because it does one particular thing, that's fine. And there's some interesting things about both of these that I think could sway your decision one way or the other. The first one is that the M1 chip in these new MacBooks is just brilliant. It's the new thing, it's the thing that everyone is talking about and everyone's very excited about it. So if you just think, well, I'd love to experience that, but I don't want the one that's in the iPad Pro because Apple don't seem to be doing anything with it, that's as good a reason as any to get yourself an M1 MacBook Air. Equally, the Apple Pencil might be enough to sway you to go with the iPad Pro. You can't get an Apple Pencil for the M1 MacBook Air. You can't touch the screen, you can't do anything with it. If you like the idea of having this, what is effectively a stylus for your next computer, then again, 
that might be something that sways you towards the iPad Pro. Similarly, and as I've just mentioned, this is the only one of these two devices that has a touchscreen. So if you're coming from the world of Windows, you may have been exposed to a device that has a touchscreen. You're not gonna get that with this. You can't touch, well, you can touch the screen, but nothing will happen. The iPad Pro has a touchscreen. And for a lot of people, particularly in this day and age, that could be enough just to sway you in its direction. The iPad Pro also has a camera. Again, you don't get a camera on the M1 MacBook Air, and that could be useful. I never use the camera on my iPad. I'm one of those people who doesn't quite understand why you would take photos with your iPad, but that may not be the case for you. You might look at this and think, well, actually, as an all-in-one device for my computing needs and photo taking needs, this is perfect. So again, that could sway you, as could a face ID. And the iPad Pro has this little face ID camera down here, which detects your face and unlocks your iPad, a bit like your iPhone. You don't get that on the M1 MacBook Air. It has touch ID, which is great, but face ID arguably is a bit easier to use because you just look at it and it works. So again, that could sway you towards the iPad Pro. You may even just like the look, feel and fit and finish of the M1 MacBook Air because even after all these years, this kind of tapered design that it has hasn't changed and it still looks modern, fresh, and just it's just a lovely laptop. That could sway you towards this and who am I to tell you that's wrong? However, all of those things are fairly small factors and <laughs> the likelihood is they're not gonna benefit you overall in the long term. They'll be the sort of things that actually are nice to begin with and then you either get used to them or you forget about them entirely. The key thing when choosing between the iPad Pro and the M1 MacBook Air, again, goes right back to the start of this video. What's your use case? Are you a creative user? Have you used macOS before? Take into account all of those things before you put down your hard-earned money. So the big question, if I could only have one of these devices, which one would it be? This is easy for me. Ready? It's the M1 MacBook Air. There's just no question about it. And again, it's for one very, very simple reason, which is I want to run or have to run Final Cut Pro and Logic Pro. I can't run those on my iPad Pro. So if I could only have one device, you know, forget everything else in here, if I could only have one device out of the iPad Pro and the M1 MacBook Air, it would be the M1 MacBook Air, just because I can't run Final Cut Pro and Logic Pro on the iPad. So those two are the headline reasons, if you like. But below that, there are the other things I mentioned earlier. And they all come down to the fact, really, that this just feels like a nice warm pair of slippers. I know that sounds like a bit of an odd analogy, but I just open this and I just feel at home straight away. Whereas when I open my iPad Pro to do proper work, I have to readjust my thinking. I, I, I don't really look forward to doing it. Unless it's a one-off simple task like editing a photo, for example, that's fine. If I need to do a sequence of things to get something done, this just feels easier. So the thing holding me back from the iPad Pro is iPad OS. I made my feelings clear about the announcements or lack of them at WWDC this year. I just hope next year we start to see Pro apps appearing on the iPad Pro. If that happens, then I'd have quite a compelling reason to switch, but it does just feel like a little way off. So for now and the foreseeable future, this would be my only Apple computing device of choice. But which one are you going for? Let me know in the comments. If you're interested in hearing a little bit more about why I'm not keen on the M1 iPad Pro, keep watching for a link to my most recent video on that particular device. But in the meantime, thank you as always for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.